All right, you're very welcome back to <laughs> Thursday's football show. Were the mics live there? No, I think we were safe enough. Keith Andrews and Kevin Kilbad have been around town all day waiting for this moment. Mm. In for the Keith Andrews show earlier. It's up on offtheball.com right now. Would you have been happy if you were part of the Sunderland Till I Die documentary? Um, As a player? No. No, I wouldn't have wanted anything. No, I wouldn't have wanted to be part of it, no. I wouldn't. I, I, um, I was never in favour of... of um, Cameras becoming the high, uh, going behind the scenes or anything like that in the dressing rooms because it, it, it becomes a false environment and la lads act differently around it, managers act differently, and it just becomes a false environment. So no, I, I would never be in favour of that. I'm bringing no. up the documentary, which I'm sure lots of people have already seen, because Simon Grayson, who was mm. one of the stars of the opening few episodes, was on <laughs> the Keith Andrews show a little bit earlier today. D do you think then that from watching the documentary that certain people in it were acting? Yes, hundred percent was. Do you think? Yeah, words out of my mouth. Yeah, hundred percent. I quite playing like to the camera. Martin Bain. No, no. Just because, he, yeah, he Is might he? have played to the camera. He may have been acting a bit, but he just played the role so well. Well, that's it. That's what it is. He's played a role. He's not necessarily been a good, a good CEO of the, of the club. What he's, did he do wrong? He's not. No, he's, he assigned Ross McCormack on maybe massive the, money. At maybe the half breaststroke 11. and the opening scene or the backstroke, whatever yeah. he's doing in the pool. The Louis Vuitton bag getting into the Range Rover. Was that yeah. really all necessary? That's, yeah. that's football, isn't it? You're all Louis Vuitton bags and Range Rovers. That's life. It's, uh, it just throws it down people's necks. It's it's honestly, I, I just, honestly, I mean, again, e each to their own, honestly. Each to their own, and people want to view it. People, of course, would have different views of me in it, but it just, it just looks, I think it looks so bad. It looked so bad how he was coming across and how he was trying to portray himself and try to portray the club and, and, and what they were wanting from it. It just didn't, it didn't sit well with me, no. Generally, chairmen and CEOs of clubs, are they very, very involved day-to-day? -day? Would you have got to know them on a pretty personal basis? Yeah. Yeah, there would be more. Some would be more friendly than others. I think there's a line that you shouldn't cross towards players. You can't be seen to be too friendly. If, if I was a manager or a coaching member and you're looking at a CEO constantly chatting away to players in the canteen or the same players, and I think that can become unhealthy. Mm. But as a, as a member of staff, it's, it's imperative that you have a good working relationship. And to be fair to Simon, who was on earlier, he said they had a very good working relationship. He was yeah. one that brought him to the football club. But I'm OK, but I didn't think he came across great. And on the flip side of that, I didn't think uh, Simon Grayson came across as Simon Grayson, to my knowledge, yeah, yeah. and to what I, I would have heard. In what way? I thought... He didn't come across very uh, well in terms of what he said, how he was saying it, the, the atmosphere that was generated at the football club, mm. having spoken to some of the players that were playing under, some of the coaching staff, uh, medical side of things. So you think the negativity, say, that particularly that transfer deadline day night where he didn't get signed, Ross McCormick, yeah. and things didn't go, and he, suddenly this narrative developed of, well, I've sort of been sold a pup here. This wasn't what I thought I was getting when I agreed to become Sunderland manager. That the way it's portrayed in the documentaries that that fed down to the players were actually in reality maybe it didn't maybe it was a lot more positive I think a lot was I think he, he tried to generate it was a huge step up from in terms of the size of the football club mm. but I think what he tried to do I think the, the goalposts were certainly moved but I don't, I don't think it portrayed what exactly he was doing behind the scenes and the, the atmosphere he was yeah. trying to generate which you were alluding to and what he was trying to bring to the team and yeah, I think it was edited very, very well. But as a whole, I enjoyed the documentary, but I, I have sympathy for Simon Grayson. What does that mean, the size of the football club? Because this is brought up, we're going to talk Manchester <coughs> United now in their game against Spurs, but it's always brought up about Manchester United, a football club of that size. Mm. Well, you've been to Sunderland, you've been to Preston, two places yeah. where Simon Gray... What, what is the difference between a club oh, of Preston size cheese. and a club of Sunderland size? Chalk and cheese, honestly. Just in terms of expectation, is it? Yeah, definitely. And I, I said it to Simon today when I spoke to him, it's... I went there. I didn't enjoy it. Didn't didn't enjoy. It wasn't so much. I didn't enjoy. And people thought I didn't enjoy the area. The people. It was nothing like that. It was just a scrutiny you were always under. On, I mean, I'd signed, and I remember I had a supporter. I was with my wife at the time. We went out for a meal. It was around about Christmas time when I signed because there was no deadline at the time. It was, it was actually the last window before the deadline came in. So or transfer a transfer window come in, should I say? Um, so I signed around Christmas time. And I had a Sunderland fan that just came in and sat beside us. Like I felt like he was just entitled to sit with us and, and have a meal with us. It was round about Christmas. I think it was between Christmas and New Year. Just sat with us. You mean at your table? At our table, 20 minutes, asking, asking me questions. And we were looking at you like... I, I didn't want, you don't want to say, look, excuse me, mate, but... That's where you're too nice. Yeah, but it's right, but it was like... There was just a, 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 
I felt as though it was you were owned. I was going to say, there's a sense of entitlement. You were owned. You belong to us. You were owned. Wherever Came you went. Came across in the documentary. Wherever you way. went across mm, the North East, it? and I mean it, honestly. And I've, I've had it at various football clubs. You've been at, you know, you, you, you played for a, a big club in Everton, played at Derby, another big club, say Champions level, West Brom, another big club. But there, it was like, you go around the supermarket, people people actually, you should be putting that, you should be putting that in your, in your trolley. <laughs> So I was like, mate, and, and I spoke, and it wasn't, and it's not just Sunderland. Yeah, I, I, up there. I've spoken to lads. Oh, There's no vegan diets then, um, but I've spoken to lads that played at Newcastle and lads who I would know, and it was pretty much same. same. Didn't didn't enjoy, and it's nothing. It, it, it's just I felt as though personally the scrutiny that you're under when you're going out for a coffee in an afternoon, whether you were um, going shopping, whether you're going out for a meal with your partners, wives, whatever it would be. I just felt as though it was too much for me personally. I'd gone from West Brom, and I'm, I say like, you know, I'd gone from like. One of the one of the most sought after players outside the Premier League at the time. You had a few options to go to different clubs, and I went to Sunderland off the back of being guaranteed to play first team football. Mm. And I went there, and um, I, and pretty much didn't enjoy it from when I signed. And again, me, I didn't play well, so I, I'm not I'm not making excuses for my own performances. I didn't play well, but I'm talking about off the pitch. I felt as though it was too much for me. But. And I was only 21 at the time. Yeah, so maybe you weren't ready for it. Because I'm just thinking of, say, when you played with Ireland, was there not that sense of ownership with Irish supporters to players? I always remember a situation, you would have been there in the team hotel in uh, Gdansk, Mm. or Sopot, as it was, at Euro 2012. The bar downstairs was open. So you were upstairs in your rooms and the bar downstairs was open. And every so often the families would come in, I'd imagine, to see the players. And I remember John O'Shea coming down in the lift and sitting down with his family and you probably got half an hour to chat. And he's sat in the corner. You can see this is private time with his wife yeah, but with, with his family and all of a sudden the fans are over not even wanting an autograph not even want a photo just to you know have a proper lo- interrupting having a proper long chat feeling this sense of you're an Irish player we've paid to come here we can spend time with you that's day to day though with Kev talking about a club life that's, mm. that's your that's your kind of bread and butter your daily routine when you come away with Ireland it's different isn't it it's, it's, it's your country and, and, and obviously Personally, I never, felt it, I never felt it overstepped the mark uh, with with Anne. I didn't, and it was it was always. In, I I always felt in a polite manner, no problems at all. Absolutely no problems at all. That's so did that I just thought. wear you down then at Sunderland every single day? Having I guess every time you leave the house, having to think, well, who's going to see this? Who's going to be questioning well, this? I, I I I don't imagine what it's like for the players now. When obviously th- so we saw it. Like, you know, Darren Gibson getting getting is obviously. Well, that's what I was wondering actually up. when you mentioned that. So yeah. there's the incident where as people will have seen it, even if you haven't seen the documentary, as you say. Gibson is out on the lash one night, is in a pub, starts bitching and moaning about all his teammates, yeah. not being up for it. It gets <clears> filmed, <throat> it gets put out everywhere. Yeah. Does that hap- Does that not, would that well, not happen I, at, say, Preston? Probably wouldn't would probably, this day and age. Yeah, it would. Of course it would happen now. Of course it would happen. Um, it wouldn't be as high profile, would it? That is the thing. But I think in general, you know, some of the, some of the antics we would have got up to, if, if you're around a social media age, it, you, it, you would have had to quickly bloody rectify it because you couldn't get away with it. We know that. But that's just life. Like what you would have got up to at university, bloody hell, Nath, I can well imagine that. <laughs> Outrageous slur. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Quite nights in playing football manager. Yeah. What true, are you talking about? All true, though. <laughs> but um, no, but I think in general, we, we all know now, we all know now we're in a different age and we know that. But I think, I, I just think in general, there, it was, we weren't in a social media age yet. It was, I felt as though it was so intense the whole time, out for a drink, you know, whether you got the right result or the wrong result in a weekend. It was just. It always just seemed that bit too much, that overwhelming in my mind. That's the way it was. It was overwhelming. That's Why do you I think thought. that is in Sunderland? Is it? I think it's the North East in general. The North East. Everybody it's says it's the lack of success. Um, the lack of success. Or does success ease it? Like, does promotion, do you get a period of grace when Sunderland get promoted or Newcastle get promoted? Do they have a decent season? Well, I always say, right, and I, and I say it all the time, the day I, the, my first game for Sunderland, I was on the bench against Southampton. I remember Peter Reid getting stick. Sunderland was second in the Premier League at the time. <laughs> Peter Reid was getting stick from supporters behind me on the bench. And I mean, even then, you think, I was looking around thinking, what? They, what? I, and I was thinking, like, what, 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 what more can be expected? Sunderland were actually second in the top four. Was it Champions League place at that stage? I don't know how it So they're just looking for an outlet to vent? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know. I might be wrong, and you could be proven wrong on that one. I, don't, I genuinely don't know. But I, I always remember thinking when I was on the bench that day, thinking, what's going on here? How, how can this be? How can, how can it be? Now, 
when you're rolling with the good times, it was it was su success. So many I've got so many friends up there because it's it was it's, it's they're amazing people. Honestly, oh, because it, it, I think I remember Niall, Niall described it in his book as being very similar to Rural Island, where people know each other's business yet. It's it's a, it can be a little bit more overwhelming than that, but it, it's still good people essentially, really, really, really good people. But it, I felt at the time it was just too much for me, particularly when you're not playing well. When I wasn't playing well and I wasn't having a good time, it just it, everything was becoming too much. But for you me. don't think you don't look at it the other way that you weren't playing well because the pressure was too much. Um, that you, you could maybe look at it like that. Especially perhaps the age you were. perhaps it was. I was a kid. I was a kid essentially when I signed there. Um, you know, you, you feel as though you're mature and things like that, but you're not. I, I look back and, of course, no, who's, who's mature at 21 or whatever it would be, 22, you're not. But it, it was just too much. And I'd, I'd played my whole career. You said the, the only thing I wanted to do as a kid was play for Ireland. When you get a, when you start to develop, you want to play for, you know, play in the Premier League. That was the thing. So you're starting to 16, 17, you want to play in the Premier League. And you put you put so much of an expectation of playing in the Premier League and it's like, right, I've reached it. Oh, God, the reality is very, very different. Everyone's a little bit quicker, everyone's a little bit sharper, everyone's a little bit better and you've got to modify your game and that's what maybe I took a little bit time to adjust to as well. So mm. that may be something that, that I, I look at myself because of that. Did you have ever any issues with that sort of off-pitch scrutiny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know where I'm going with this? No. Oh, do you know? I thought you were... Throwing a little grenade there. Well, I'm purpose. just throwing it out there. On, but, uh, I, don't, I, don't know. I had more to a Blackburn fans. I had more there. I got away with one really because I was getting a bit of stick off the fans post Paul Ince leaving. And then Sam Ballas took over and I got on really well with him, played. So that was fine. And then Steve Keane took over and fans started getting on my case a little bit. And um, Steve Keane left me out of the team because of the fans, which I was right. He actually said he used that as an excuse. So the following game when I came out, I was playing all the rest of the fans again and they were quite like proper and he took me off. So I thought he's hung me out to dry there. And there was these fans behind the, the dugout, you know, at Ewood Park where they kind of go up along mm. the side. Yeah. And this one fan in particular, he was always cheerful, always cheerful. And I just lost me and launched a, a full bottle of Lucas Aid straight at them. But as I went like that, the fitness coach grabbed my arm and instead of it going there, it went like that way. Oh no! Hit this woman straight in the face. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Oh, no. Yeah. So um, I got in a bit of trouble for that. I think it would have taken some, it, it, it would have taken some some shot to actually hit the fellow you were meaning to hit as well. In fairness, when you think about it. Yeah. Well, I tried to get at him as well. But <laughs> did you? Oh, Jesus. And did you see instantly that you'd hit the woman straight <laughs> in the face? Well, no. The fitness coach jumped on me, but then I like, seen her kind of holding her face, and then was there blood? No, it wasn't that bad. Like, is this, Brooks metal ball. this Brooks kept get the Ryder Cup, almost <laughs> blinding a woman. <laughs> no. did you, what did you have to do? You, obviously, she came into the training ground. Must have been the, must have been a Saturday. She came into the training on the Monday and I apologised. And what did she say? She was good as gold. She she didn't agree with all the the stick I was getting, and she felt a little bit. And I was, mm. obviously didn't mean to hear her. But wait, this was a full Lucasade bottle from what fifteen feet away, smash in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been done for grievous yeah, yeah. bodily harm. I was Maybe looking. I, I, you know, I, I wasn't caught on camera. I mean, seriously though, it's it's you know what we, we commentate in games a lot though, and you know when we see someone do something stupid, and we say, "What's he thinking about there?" But the stuff you do when you're playing or when you're coming off the pitch, things. Like, I remember I, when I give the Southern fans the V's, and it's, it's so much is made of it. So everyone, everyone always thinks I was sold immediately after that. I was actually at the club a year after that before I'd gone, and actually had my best season at Sunderland after it, as it turned out. Um, but we. The, what, what, the things you, do, you don't realise what you're doing, that, that sort of thing. You, if you're thinking the cold light of day, would you do that? No chance. No, it's a build-up, isn't it? And you're yeah. so highly strung in terms of playing in front of whatever it was, 25,000 people at Ewood, and you're coming off and you, you're, you're, all your emotions are, you, you're raging with fans, you're raging mm. with the manager, and like all these kind of, I oh, shouldn't even be at this club, all these things are going through your head, and you've come off a, a pitch where you're 100 miles an hour and you're like so intense, so into it, trying to get a result for your team, your teammates. You've got all these different emotions going on, and then that happens. Well, you're right, logic just goes yeah. out the window, but I was certainly fortunate I got away with <laughs> Damn right you were. Yeah, it's on. miraculous in a way that more incidents like that, like Cantona kung fu kicking into the crowd. Yeah. It's, 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 it's incredible. It's like if you're there, that and that's the, that's the stand, and you're in the mm. stand, and you are just volleying abuse at us. And that we've seen it, obviously, with racist abuse in mm. recent mm. weeks, months, years, where it's been clamped down. But if it's non-racial, and you're just giving us abuse, abuse, abuse. I remember even a few years ago, at Preston, funny enough, I was doing a game for Sky, and we were literally just the opposite side. 
I'd, I've never even come across Preston. And this fan was literally, well, the whole time we were on air, like, from here to the camera, probably as far away, launching abuse, at lot, and, like, aggressive, and, like, foaming at the mouth. Stewards just standing by waiting. And then, literally, as soon as we went to ads, I just stared at him. Next time we were on, he's throwing things at me. Ah, I'm like, come on. Seriously? Like your analysis. But if yeah. I reacted, which is fair enough, but if I reacted, then it's all on me. Yeah. How's that right? Well, do you know what? Even, even well, that's, that, that wouldn't have happened in Preston, as you know, but... Um, <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, even the, the Raheem Sterling, when you said the racial abuse, right? Whether or not the lad who, who actually said, I didn't racially abuse him, these are middle-aged men, 40, 50-year-old men, actually abusing him the way... That, real... You, you can see the anger in the yeah, faces. Yeah. This Hatred. Is, this is like, it's like, why would you? Why on earth would you have that in you to actually abuse someone in that manner? That's not a one-off. No, like, they got caught common. that time. That yeah. is not a one-off. Hundred percent. That is the pattern of going every so- Saturday for years yeah. and getting away with it. Yeah. Just been unlucky in a way. Yeah, yeah. They were yeah. unlucky that at that one moment, Raheem Sterling stood in front of them and the TV camera had zoomed yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's right. Wow, That's I right. can't believe you threw a full Lucas A bottle yeah. smash in the face. There, what age was this woman? Uh, I don't know, about fifty. Ah, oh, well, no. Did you give her a signed jersey? Was it a... Wasn't a Keith again Andrews with the, it, Again with the... Uh, <laughs> been a golf, David Dunn one. <laughs> a, a golfing analogy. Was it like Phil Mickelson when he smacks someone on the head, you get the glove and $100 glove. inside? Oh, I, think she, I think I got flowers or something along that. I, I can't remember. Exactly. And would you but generally have heard apologetic. abuse? Say in the middle of a game. Uh, middle yeah, of a game. Did, would you, you hear... Do you remember, touch line, I remember yeah. at Wolves when I first broke in and there was a lad called Lee Naylor, left back. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, he he would have been the year ahead of me. And he got in and like... Fans were on his case as a 19, 20 year old lad. And I remember thinking, I was sat in the stand as a year younger. I was like, what's going on here? Like, why are they moaning? At? He's come through the academy. And I've seen players. Like, Wolves is a tough place to play. Yeah, I was going to say that to you actually. That, that can, Wolves is a tough similar crowd. Sort of thing. Yeah, tough, yeah. tough crowd. And I've seen players. Big club, past melt. successes, you know, yeah. and it's difficult then because you think they're, they're, they're above where they, they really are aware, I should say. And They don't like you to start with. You're not helping matters right now. Who? You. Wolves don't like me. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I've been back there recently. It's grand. It's not about yeah, being liked, Nathan. It's just about, it's about being treated. Oh, yeah, I don't you, want li- you, you want to be liked. Just want to be loved. You not want to be liked. I want to yeah. be loved. Yeah. I read a piece with you actually in the Examiner recently oh, as well. Did you read, have you read his no. interview? In, honestly, it's really, really interesting read. Really, it's worth anyone. Not here to talk about that. Anyone listening? We're not here to talk. People, people don't care about me. They just want to hear your Nathan Murphy. They just want to hear your no. Just want to hear your insight. Yeah, it's 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 an eye opener into the world of of Nathan Murphy. I'm going to get a bottle of water and. And take his, it straight into your face and from his 10 yards away in his aspirations yeah. in life my yeah. aspirations yeah. Well, the, the, picture, the picture to be, great to as be well. Dave McIntyre the picture, well, the picture was uh, without question photoshopped massively yeah. yeah no it was an insight into a top OTB presenter it was an insight into his world his diet he actually talks about his diet as well his fitness regime oh, I didn't geez. want to they asked Honestly. no well I, I know what you're thinking you, the que- with anyone. Uh, you answer the questions no he's got in a habit of going to the gym regularly feels great about himself now and uh, really? I don't know if I said that well that's, that's what's said in the, in the interview yeah. you don't, feel don't great about quite yourself that, yeah. that far yeah yeah, no, you've got to give a positive, uh, up, you know. See, we've seen this before. About with, like players, we would have played with, and they get that. You know, when they get that first big contract, yeah, and then they, they lose start the one getting a little yeah. bit giddy, and they buy the yeah. car. And I they, just haven't got that first what, big contract. You know, like, yeah, exactly. You know, you know what I mean? Dave, Dave, Dave McIntyre's out the door yeah. now, and now he sees the main, Boom. he's the main, main commentator, <laughs> main presenter. Yeah, Super Nathan. Yeah, exactly. What did he get? You got? Did you come second behind Joe in then the sports presenter of the year as well? Was it? Did you get? You wow. did, did you? You did, didn't you? Yeah. Wow. So now he's he's, re- he's trying to get to Joe Malloy's level. Why is he level. looking so uneasy? He's trying to get up to Joe Malloy. It's, it's, it's a compliment. You're doing great for yourself. Fair Second play is you. all right. Honestly, fair play to you. Anyways, we wanted to talk about the games this weekend. We got <laughs> sidetracked massively. I was enjoying the initial sidetracking, yeah. but we've got doubly sidetracked now that nobody really wanted to hear about. So uh, we're going to be at Goodison Park. You're going to be at Goodison Park on I am, Sunday yeah. alongside Stephen Bournemouth. Doyle. Everton Bournemouth. I opened up the paper earlier on today, Keith Andrews, to see uh, Kevin Kilban. Admit Seamus Coleman is not the player he once was. Is that what I That's said? That's the headline. That's what you said. That's the headline. Um, I, I probably said it on the line. James Coleman must change his game to advance as a professional. Warns Kevin. Did I say he wasn't the player once was? I don't think I said that. I said he needs to change That's just his like game. Part of yeah. what he said. No, he That's does. the headline. Yeah, he d- I think he does need what to change his game as he gets older. I didn't say that. Uh, but Son, I mean, was it? The Mirror said Seamus Coleman okay. must change his game to advance as a professional. 
Yeah, that's what I Do you agree with that? I said I, I Are we said, going to be getting Coleman having a pop at Kilban next time out? No, no I, I didn't actually say it. I didn't actually say that he, he wasn't the, he's not the yeah, player he wants to be. It's been a bit uneasy, Kev, with that. No, you, not saying at all. you didn't say I'm this. I'm quite happy what I said. Interviews, Kev. People, people, you say one thing, people write another thing. Exactly. There you, you go. Know? Um, no, I, um, I, think, I think he does need to modify his game to an extent as he's getting older. They do. He, he, it's a natural thing. I think when he. I, I, I spoke. If you listen to Keith Andrews' show today, we had this conversation mm. anyway. I, I heard um, it. But um, no, I, I think I think now he's he's at he's at he's at an age, and I've you even asked the question when I was speaking to lads the other day. Like, is a, is he is his place in doubt? No chance, absolutely no. He, he he is first name on the team sheet, captain. He has to play. Simply has to play every game for us because we've we've got no one that's played at his level, his consistency over the last six or seven years. There's no one at that level. He simply has to play every game. But what I was meaning from it. Seamus Coleman, when he was playing under Martinez, when he was playing under certain managers, he just had a license to go, you go mm. where you want, go and get forward, go and arrive in the penalty area, in, in, uh, around the penalty spot at times, getting goals, creating goals from, uh, from deep positions, then getting in advance. I think he's got to, he's, he will have to modify the game as he's going through. Now, I think he's even modifying his game now under Marco Silva. D- doesn't play at the, the same standard or the same style as Martinez. He's more of a, I would say... A Mourinho type manager in the fact is that it's very much positional sense everybody knows the position on the pitch I imagine he works on his team shape constantly um, Marco Silva it doesn't necessarily work on set pieces mind but he does work on um, on on positional sense of the team so you'll see Seamus Coleman now not necessarily having freedom just say right go go on go on and get an advance so that's what I was meaning from the fact is he he, he needs to modify I think as he gets older simply energy levels and mm. fitness levels and everything will not he will not be able to do the things he was doing three or four years ago. Anyway, regardless of the injury, put the injury aside, he will not be able to do that in any case. We've seen quite a bit of Everton this season. Uh, saw them at Old Trafford against Manchester United with Martial, gave him a really tough day. It feels as though a lot of teams, are, are they targeting him? Are they trying to go down that their left-hand side, the Everton right? Do they spot a weakness there compared to, say, Luka Dinia on the other side? No, I'd have shame to over Luka Dinia as it as as a defender in 1v1 yeah, scenarios I think there's been certain games where he hasn't mm. hit the heights most certainly whether that's the age whether it's the, the injury the after effects of the injury we, we don't know but I'm with Kev in terms of he is going to have to tweak his game and he's not going to he's not going to be able to be as explosive as expansive as marauding as he has been traditionally <coughs> but I don't see a problem with that and we were chatting about it earlier where I think Mick McCarthy will actually like that I think he'll like a fullback to be in a position where he's not out of the game if they lose possession high up the pitch. He's in a position where he's able to stop counter-attacks. And he's going to have to become even better in possession than he's ever been. Because when you think about Seamus Coleman getting into those tricky situations, mm. it's always been head down, manipulate the ball, go on little mazes. Now he's going to have to use his passing ability probably even more so than ever. But I, in terms of him, Ireland, and let's not forget, we were saying about it earlier, John Joe Kenny isn't exactly Cafu. He'll be back in the team. Mm. It does feel as though this collapse in his form has been massively overstated. Yeah, I agree. Because I agree. Jesus, we've seen him there. I, I couldn't. I agree. So he had a bad. They had a very good run of form when he was playing very, very well. Yeah. And then over Christmas, they they won bad result. But then he dropped Idrissa Ganagay out of the team. Suddenly, in that game against, I think it was, was it the game against Spurs? Spurs. Like there was, was it Spurs' second goal no, where he, he was um, the, he, Idrissa Gay was injured or, or suspended. Well, Tom Davies yeah. came into the side yeah. In, yeah. in his place. And like obviously, Gay does a huge amount of the donkey yeah, work in the middle work. of midfield. But the ball broke down on the halfway line. Coleman, Coleman had sort of stepped forward. But there was nobody back covering. And Mi- yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Keane has no pace mm. of note at all. But they've changed the team slightly. He, maybe he's not at 100%. But this thing that his form has fallen off a cliff. Yeah, it's he scored the own goal. From he scored the own goal. What the hell could he have done with the own goal yeah, but, as well? But that boiled down to yeah. Gary Neville's analysis afterwards that he didn't shift his body quick enough and then the second goal where even Neville in his analysis said maybe he could have slightly shifted his body shape and yeah, got a yeah, jump yeah. but when the forward gets a run on you like that there's nothing you could do. 100%. And because that was on television that was it becomes position, this story. Where, that was a position exactly where I used to love to ex- exploit as well. It was, it was, it was um, DeCorey who scored the goal wasn't it Watford? I used to love it because you know for a fact the fullback is flat footed the only thing a fullback can do there yeah. actually is actually jump yeah. into you jump in and stop you jumping because if you get the jump they're done absolutely no chance and as a fullback even though I was a, a tall fullback 
you know full well if someone that's even smaller coming over, it's coming over your shoulder, you can't get the jump. So as soon as he's on top of you and he's jumping, you've no chance. The only thing you can do is actually stop him and jump into him and actually put him off, which in turn you could be given a foul away. That's the only thing you can do in that position. I think he's been unfortunate in that you look at Michael Keane, who isn't comfortable when they're far up the pitch because he doesn't have the pace to get back, also is not good on the ball. The amount of times you see Michael Keane under no pressure roll it mm. three yards behind Coleman or three yards in front. And also on the other side... Bernard, when he plays, or Richarlison, they like to cut in a little bit, mm. get out of Luca Dina's way, whereas Walcott and Coleman, for no, whatever reason, yeah, don't exactly. seem to have any understanding. That's what I said. I said that weeks ago. The two of them do not complement each no. other at all. Walcott's, Walcott is a sim- it takes the same positions that Seamus Coleman likes to take. I don't think Walcott's clever enough to come in and play off a striker that frees up Coleman down the outside. He constantly wants to make runs wide, whereas that's the space that he does. The, the two of them don't work together. As in, in tandem, they're not appearing. Nowhere near appearing. Whereas you say on the other side, you've got Bernard and, and Luca Dean. Whereas look at the combinations that they're playing. It's almost like Baines and Pino from a few years ago. That combination worked brilliantly. So, no, I don't see that combination working. Do you think by the end of the season we'll all have come to an agreement on how you pronounce Luca Dean's yeah, name? Yeah, we've got it. We, uh, we, we, You're going Luca Dean. I think, well, that's what we're talking about. Luca Dean. It's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like when you pronounce it with a D, isn't it? But Luca Dean. I don't think he's done enough yet to warrant a debate about it. Oof. Has he really? Wow. He's well, he not right, been quite solid. Yeah, all right, like, but he's not like Leighton Baines. Yeah, he's just well. Everton. Well, well, Baines he played well last weekend actually. But where, where do you see Everton going then? Because so they started the season pretty inconsistent. Had this brilliant run. They go to Stamford Bridge. They get this scoreless draw. Remember Stephen Kelly saying at the time, Everton the last couple of years lose that game, but they grind it out. They put their heads down. And then it just collapses over Christmas. Well, we were at the most side derby, weren't we? As well, yeah. they, they, that, that, that felt they, like the turning point. Yeah, then. they were. Uh, they weren't great, but they played well. Mm. You know, they played well. They, they, they deserved a draw, didn't they, on the day. And th- since that game, it's been a collapse. Poor, isn't it? That, that, yeah. And then maybe mentally they went after that game, I don't know. I know they got the Burnley result um, through the Christmas time, but other than that, it's been dreadful stuff. The Tottenham game was, was as bad as you'd ever see. Now, Tottenham were, were amazing to watch. The energy that they played, the movement was, was sensational, but... They, they shouldn't be really conceding six goals. Mm. The quality that Everton have got is conceding six at goals home. at home. Sheary's yeah. come out hasn't he, in the last couple of days and yeah, said has, the ambitions. Yeah. He's had a pop, hasn't he? Yeah, not good enough where they are, but he's still the one because let's not forget the money they paid for Marcus. Well, Silva. that's what I was going to ask. Like Silva, is is he a Portuguese pardew? Is he a <laughs> bit of a bullshitter? A Portuguese pardew. Well, I, I, I said before that. Look, look at his... Look at his Look at his results. CV. Well, do you know the set piece? The, pe- the set piece thing is something that annoyed me on Stephen. It's not Sound just an across thing. Six yeah. box. He did it at Hull. Did it at uh, Watford. At Watford, right? His. I, I, everyone talks about Everton having a poor record from set pieces this season. He had a poor record at Hull and he had a poor record mm-hmm. at uh, at Watford. The way that they line up, and I always think, and it, coaches in general will have a, a massive disagreement with it. Mm. You'd have done your badges. I know I would have done my badges when you're having this conversation. You disagree. People like doing zonal. People like doing it man marking. Personally, I would like to do it where you have you have a bit of both. It's a compromise where you have a, a few people that are able to be a bit free. Who does that well? Are there teams that you've watched who do that well? Uh, do the compromise well. Uh, mo- most t- most teams, Liverpool zonal mark, uh, Everton zonal mark, City man mark uh, with a, with an element of zonal. They don't really concede so a lot. And yeah. Six yard. yeah, so essentially w- when you're saying zonal, you'll have player on the front post free, player in the middle of the, uh, the six yard box free, middle of the goal, back post. Those three are, are zonal. Basically, you go and head the ball. Sometimes it can be three of your better headers, but sometimes you might need someone that specific job of doing a man-marking job. And then you've got two or three others doing the marking job. Sometimes it can become a, mi- a mismatch with one of your markers. That's, that's, that's your only problem with that. I prefer to go with your best markers, not necessarily your tallest players, but your best markers matching, those. matching theirs up. Match up and then you maybe free, free up one of your better headers the middle of the six yard box you go and head it whether that's Set in behind you maybe. yeah that's that's what I, that's my personal preference on it i think zonally you will always be susceptible to an under hit corner or a, an over hit corner to the far post so near and po- near post and far post you're vulnerable and also a short corner you're short always every time you're so always any time vulnerable. a short corner that then becomes second phase so a direct mm. corner yeah. kick there's the accusation where if it's a standing jump someone against a running there's only going to be one winner but even when it's come short and there's more movement in the middle, who, the zonal goes out the window. Yeah, yeah. Because the exactly. ball's been moved, the picture changes. What are those six, seven bodies supposed to do? Where are they supposed to go? And 
so that next step and of what you're saying, where are they meant to go? Well, well, well. Who, whose responsibility is that? Is that something you should have worked That's on some, on the training ground well, as well? They will have worked should on players it. players be smart but enough I've, to figure it out themselves? I've seen it at Everton lots of times. First game of the season against, I think it was Southampton, I was there. Shambles. Yeah. As soon as you move it short and it's whipped in, even if it's just five yards back to you, you deliver... It's a different, whoa, whoa, what are we doing? And yeah. you can't adjust quick enough. So you're saying take responsibility. It's mm. difficult. Because if that ball's moved and we're man to man, I've got Kev, yeah. I've still got him two, three, four yeah. seconds later. See it through. It's always the old one who said to you, see the job through until the, so ball, the ball goes, goes dead, dead. See yeah. your job through. If you're marking him, I'm marking Keith, I'm marking him, see the job through. But when you're marking Zonley, who's my man? Where do I mark? Who do I go to? And then you might lock onto someone that's near to you. It, it just, it, everything goes out and it's, it's, a, it's a strange one. I, I personally think that that zonal system is heavily flawed more flawed than a man-to-man marking system we'll preview Spurs Man United over the next couple of days that's our second live commentary from Wembley myself and Brian Carroll will be at that one just before we finish up then for tonight Bournemouth have had a really good season again really exciting young attacking players Fraser, Brooks Callum Wilson who this week has been strongly linked with that move to Chelsea yeah, potentially 50 for 50 million how do you know when a player like Callum Wilson gets linked with one of the big teams. So he's playing for Bournemouth. I'd imagine not many teams go to Bournemouth and sit back. So you get to show your pace, you get to go in behind. Is there a way of, is there any way of knowing, I guess there's not, of whether someone is ready to step up from playing for Bournemouth to playing for Chelsea? I don't think he's ready for Chelsea. Why? I think we were talking about big clubs Chelsea, and we're talking about that transfer fee. I think he's done really well. Mm. Every step he's taken in his career, um, He's done it well considering he's had the injury problems he's had. I think he's done both cruciates, so he's kept his pace as well. He's obviously clearly worked very hard at that. I don't think he has the game intelligence to play at a club of that stature. And I also think the way that Chelsea play predominantly against three quarters of the teams in the league, they will have teams camped in into their half. He's, he's less effective. Against Bournemouth teams, when they play them, they're less yeah. respectful of Bournemouth than they will be against so Chelsea. Push up to the halfway line. Yeah, to the space in behind. His overall game has improved a lot as the years have gone by. But his general build-up play, his runs, aren't, for me, of the level of a 50 million quid striker or a, or a striker that Chelsea want to really, really improve. That, that's, the, that's the price, though, isn't it? It's yeah. 50 million if you want to get him. That's yeah, that, like that game intelligence, it's probably what Giroud has in, has in spades, is it? But He knows his role, he yeah. knows his strengths, and he knows what he brings to the table in terms of that platform to Play it into me, I will take care of two centre-halves, and then you can make the runs off it. Hazard would hate playing with Callum Winston. Right. Why? I think. He because just... he's not going to give you a build-up play. He's not going to give you the base. He's always going to play on shoulders. Yeah, yeah. No chance. And I think that's why they like playing Mr. Rio. That's why Murata doesn't happen. That and the fact that he's, he's had massive confidence issues. All right. Lads, great stuff for you for the weekend. Well Leeds Derby, and then Burnley Fulham. Leeds collapsing? No, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lost three on the spin, two on the league. Leeds so. Derby tomorrow. Leeds Derby tomorrow, Shea Givens Derby. Very good. Yeah. And where are you Saturday? Uh, Burnley Fulham. Oh, yeah. Relegation good. scrap. Yeah, well, I'm at West Ham. West Ham Arsenal, half 12 Saturday. Kick off and then... See our, if, if, if you see our boy after the game, make sure you... Uh, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, so try and get run, away with him. Run the other way, Kev. Should I try Nobody get... in this country wants you talking to Declan I'll, go, I'll go down and try and grab <laughs> no, no, him. You I'll, go the, when, when you're get out there, of the ground as quickly you're as possible. You're on Saturday, I'll send you a text. Nath, I've, got, I've had 10 minutes with Declan <laughs> yeah, Rice. Yeah, I'll send yeah. you through to you. you want to play it? Declan, if you look at what Garth Southgate is doing, I think, <laughs> I think there's a really good role yeah. for you there in the middle of midfield. <laughs> and then Stephen Doyle Sunday anyway, of course. Everton Bournemouth. All right, great stuff, lads.